So let's return briefly to this question of what energy is. And Richard Feynman, who was, of course, one of the outstanding scientists in the 20th century, in the beginning of the 21st century, famously said, we actually don't understand what energy is. But then he went on to say something very important. He said, there's a fact, or if you wish, a law governing all natural phenomena that are known to date. There is no known exception to this law. It is exact so far as we know, and that law is called the conservation of energy. Now, as I pointed out, until the law of the conservation of energy was understood, remarkably little progress was made in the development of scientific ideas. And if we take the idea of energy here and we look at the categories that comprise energy, we know a number of them. There's chemical energy, derived from chemical reactions. There's electrical energy. There's electromagnetic energy. There's thermal energy from the motion of molecules. There's mechanical energy in the form of kinetic energy and potential energy. And then finally, there's nuclear energy, the energy released from nuclear reactions. But these are all categories of energy. And nature, remarkably, interchanges en energy amongst and between these categories seamlessly with profound accuracy in that the total amount of energy in the universe remains constant. Another aspect of understanding energy relates to the orders of magnitude associated with energy scales and the relationship between energy and power. So on this diagram, we see a range defining the orders of magnitude in energy. Starting at the top, the energy output of the sun each year, this is more than 10 to the 33 joules of energy produced, all the way down to the kinetic energy of a single nitrogen molecule in the air around you. That is 10 to the minus 21 joules of energy. So that dynamic range in orders of magnitude turns out to be extremely important to dissect. And we will work through each of these. And the aspect that's so important is that by knowing the ratios of particular uh, energy magnitudes, you can very quickly assemble and remember these orders of magnitude. And so we can break this scale into parts and understand those segments. And I break the top and the bottom end of this as examples which I've just discussed. Then there's the issue of power. Power is energy per unit time. And we know this through the power exhibited by a powerful automobile. It can accelerate very quickly, which means it can convert energy into motive force very, very quickly. So it has very high power because that energy conversion per unit time is very large. So we want to track the orders of magnitude related to power as well as with energy. And we'll see that the issues that are carried through by the orders of magnitude in power inform us in a very important way about aspects that are not related and scaled directly to energy, but rather to the change in energy per unit time.